want to go back in time a little bit to that. Uh, I love the way you put it, that spider bite moment, okay? So you, the study comes out. I have not heard of that study, but it's kind of alarming when, when we say nearly 50% drop in empathy. And that was 2009. And I don't know about you, my friend, but I'm not seeing empathy make a comeback since 2009. And, and in fact, if anything, it may be sliding even further. So from what you've noticed and seen, uh, wh what are the causes? Wh why are we seeing empathy take that that drop? Yeah, so it would be great if I could just say, oh, we just need to do this one thing and it will correct everything. But that's not not what's happened. Um, this is as, as like so many changes in society. Um, this is there's been a lot of different causes that have, have led to this is that we've looked at and, and reflected on it. And and it does go back in time. It's things that were happening in the 80s and then in particular in the 90s that really set the stage for where we are today. So a few of those things, um, you know, if you think about on an individual level, kids and the way that kids are being raised. So I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. And back then it was very common about mom, I'm bored. I'd hear, you know, go outside and play. Or if it was raining out or cold, go up to your room. And in those moments, I would end up role playing. I would find do something that was more creative play that involves imagination. And those types of activities are actually empathy building. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to role play, um, being, you know, Wonder Woman, for example, which I did and I write about in my book. Um, so a, a hero of mine. If I'm going to step into the boots of Wonder Woman, yeah. it's not me as Wonder Woman. It's me being that person and be being her. And what is that like? Or if I'm going to be Spider-Man or Superman, yeah. you're stepping into their shoes. And so that's built, you know, even if you're playing restaurant or dolls um, or action figures, you're pretending to be that character and it's building your empathy muscle. So then, you know, that was in my childhood. Now today, um, and, and starting in the 90s, it started to become, um, you know, a bad thing for kids to be bored. And we needed kids to start to have more extracurricular activities. For some, it was about having the childcare because both parents are working or whoever, you know, the adult is, was working and, and somebody needed to look after the kid. So there was the childcare element, or there was the desire that, hey, my kid's got to, you know, I want my kid to get into the best school and to get that set up, mm -hmm. we've got to be doing all the activities now. And so kids started becoming overscheduled and they stopped having the time to be bored. And then you started adding all the screens that became available and those started to become a distraction. And typically, and this is another thing then that's causing um, part of the erosion and empathy is the way technology has advanced. We're having relationships with screens, with inanimate objects rather than with people. And even if you think about playing video games back in the day, um, you weren't able to multiplayer through the cloud. You would have to sit on the sofa with your buddy and play, you know, the video game. But even in that scenario, you were having a converse, you were interacting with the screen rather than having a conversation with your friend. And if you look at people's um, engagement online, if they're playing a multiplayer game, they're not interacting truly with each other in an empathetic fashion, they're engaged in the game. So it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So another opportunity for us to have, um, have empathy building moments was, has been taken away or it's diminished. So that's another reason is the technology. And then you have the things that are happening on a more societal level. So back in the 90s, there was um, political polarization really started to get dialed up. Um, you know, with, you know, Bill Clinton was in office, Newt Gingrich came in as the Speaker of the House, the contract with America. And that's when you really started to see the winner takes all, um, you know, scorched earth kind of political approach and less of the compromise and collaboration that, um, you know, some of us remember from earlier eras and, and long for a return to. So you've got that being modeled. And even if, 
the you know our elected representatives are able to collaborate behind scenes what they're presenting out to the public is very much a different story it's a very different situation of you know down with the you know own the libs and down with the republicans yeah. whatever that situation is so then okay so that's happening then you've got um the media and reality tv which also got started in the late 90s on the media side if you look at any of the the news networks what do they do it's all about winner takes all it's a zero-sum game it's pitting left against right and having a fight because that leads to more ratings and that leads to more um money uh ultimately and we're listening to that we're taking that in and you start thinking oh that's how i'm supposed to show up that's how you know that's acceptable behavior to you know shout at somebody and and, and yell and, and whatnot um and then reality tv what is a lot of reality tv but you know the first one that really got things going was survivor survival yeah. of the fittest That's zero from the game winner takes all um and you've seen it change i mean it's it's fascinating when the you know real housewives is, is still really popular and, and some of the other uh competition shows where that is still one winner standing above all. But then you also look at, at shows like the Great British Baking Show, or you look at RuPaul's Drag Race, both of which have become really popular. And those are promoting more of an uh, empathy with each other, of, of uh, collaboration. Even though it is a competition, there's a community that's truly formed of support amongst the contestants. And I think the uh, degradation of empathy and the degradation of so much of the, the sort of, uh, civility in our society we're seeing the desire for that to return in the embrace of some of those shows so you've got the reality and media also playing into it and i'm not done <laughs>